No. Can you get the picture? Yeah. You never yeah. had an archaeologist, do you? No. <laughs> you lie. <laughs> anyway, so these are the three parts of this. Now, just imagine what this would have been like back then when that object went down. Give you an idea of its dimension. Remember that one that hit the Yucatan? There's one boundary, there's the other boundary of the crater. Chesapeake Bay Impact Crater, there. Uh, how many of them do Meteor Crater in Arizona? It's right that little dot. <laughs> it looks humongous when you're there. But compared to these other things, it's small. Now, the next thing is, are you ready? Here's how we learn about these things. We do seismic surveys. We set up uh, charges, creates a wave that goes into the ground, comes to a different one layer or another. That layer causes some of that energy to be reflected back to the surface and is recorded by a seismometer. Part of the wave keeps going down, it's reflected back. And what we get then is a picture. And this is a traverse made by seismic. Also, um, there's a drill rig right here. Uh, drilling is the best way to get information from the deep. This is what a drill rig looks like. Um, normally, a well drill around here will get two, three hundred feet. This one is over five thousand feet. So, it's really deep. Uh, <clears throat> give you some idea of the data. These are all deep boreholes that go into the crystalline rock or the rock below the coastal plain. Got that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Isn't this exciting looking stuff? <laughs> you should see these guys. They go ape over it. Uh, but it's, it's rather interesting though, because see these bouldery big pieces? Those were once blasted free into the atmosphere, came back down. Many on the perimeter of this big hole. These are later. Now, how did all this stuff get bumped, dumped down back, dumped back down the hole? Gravity. <laughs> when the tide rushes in. <laughs> hey guys, think of it. What happened to all that seawater when that object hit the surface? Oh, vaporized. Oh. Ah, what's that tidal wave called? Tsunami. Tsunami. That's right. So the tsunami moved outward. A lot of the debris fell on the perimeter. When that water that went away comes back, what's it going to do? Wash it's it going to wash back in. That's going to take with it at least kind of a slurry. How many live in Hampton? Uh, you know, people, you're living on the area where there's a lot of bluff beneath you and you're sinking faster than we are in Williamsburg. <laughs> okay? And this is the stuff that's swept back in by the, the wave. But there are secondary waves that bring in this other smaller stuff, okay? So now you've got a big, humongous tidal wave. Uh, how big is that wave? Well, we'll see if we can find out. Uh, at the base of this core, is a really neat looking rock. It's actually an igneous rock that because of the temperatures and pressure, it went from a solid rock into a taffy. And that's what happens with that igneous rock. It's obviously just been superheated under incredible pressures. And you get these very unusual things. Uh, this is a breccia. The, the reason we, we call it a breccia is it's got angular pieces as opposed to round. And so these are the kinds of sediments that come up in boreholes. Uh, a guy in uh, Williamsburg named Glenn Isaac likes to look at quartz crystal uh, grains. And he keeps looking for these things. You can actually take a quartz grain, hit it with an instantaneous high pressure, and it creates this unique pattern. When you start looking at the sediments, in the boreholes, you find these. And nature, nature made them by this impact hitting the, the material underneath it. <coughs> so this is called <coughs> shock quartz, and it's an indication of impact crater. So when you go to Russia and look at some of their craters, we look for this. A lot of people say, oh, well, we got a crater here. It's a volcanic crater. It doesn't have this. 
Okay. <clears throat> I said we had seismic surveys. This is a, these are lines of seismic survey. Uh, you get in a ship here, and you go along this line, and all the time you have a, a thing that creates a, a sound wave, penetrates through the water, into the underlying sediment, and gives you a picture, which looks something like that. See all the wiggly lines? Every one of those little wiggly lines is a reflector, a bed that's down there that reflects something. But notice the pattern here shifts. That's